Hello, and welcome to A Bird's Eye View. In this series, we'll be discussing everything school bus related from the perspective of a leading school bus manufacturer. I'm Brad Beauchamp, Alternative Fuels Manager at Bluebird. I'm Steve Whaley, Business Development at Bluebird. We're gonna discuss my favorite topic, all things propane this season. And I'm Albert Burley, Vice President of Alternative Fuels for Bluebird. So let's hop on the bus and let's get started. Welcome to A Bird's Eye View, and this episode is all about propane performance. And we have Ryan Zick from Roush Cleantech, and along his side we have Albert Burley, Vice President of Alternative Fuels for Bluebird. So let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about propane performance, right? And this is, uh, think of it as we've been in this propane world now uh, for more than, more than a dozen years, right? It's, it's, uh, it, it's a dozen years since we started getting yep. Uh, yep. school buses, the liquid propane injection on the road. Uh, from a performance standpoint, how, do, how does that look? What, what, what are we seeing on these buses as they age? Well, uh, like you said, we've been out there long enough now where we've got vehicles going through end of life, you know, normal life cycle, right? And the question we always got early on, I was around for those days, was, well, how long is this engine going to last? How long is it going to hold up? And the, the answer at the time was, we think it's going to do pretty well, but only time is going to tell, right? So now time is told. And sure, we've had failures here and there, but overall durability has been really good, where we've got vehicles in the field on route with uh, 250,000 miles on the original engine. Uh, we've got some customers that have done videos for us just talking about the overall durability that it's had. So I think we've, uh, we've seen some benefits that we didn't expect. Um, you know, we, we always talk about how clean the oil changes are. And I think, you know, that's the lifeblood of the engine and it's always cleaner. And for those, you know, folks that haven't changed oil on it, when you change oil on a propane, you know, it doesn't have all that, you know, dark uh, suspended carbon in it. And it's just cleaner, you know, overall oil all the time when you're running on propane. So as it relates to urban, suburban, uh, even rural use, performance characteristics in those environments, uh, Propane's running in all of them. Is there any that stand out or any that uh, we've learned are a challenge? Well, I, I think as you get more rural, um, propane becomes more prevalent. Just as a fuel in general, it's a very rural fuel. But as you've said, we've got them in the hearts of some of the biggest cities as well. So it can really do, you know, pivot and be the chameleon fuel for any of those different applications. Um, the, the places where it really shines the best, where its features really, you know, um, our, our showstoppers are where it's extremely cold and you've got kind of a tough route application. They do really, really well in those environments. And that has to do with just the properties of the fuel itself, but that's where it absolutely shines. But yeah, we've seen, you know, deployments in urban areas, suburban areas, and absolutely some of the rem most remote rural areas that you can think of. And some hilly terrains, you know, up in the mountains, for example, there was always concerns, will it, will it pull a hill, right? Like, like my diesel will, and we find out that it actually does a better job in many cases than the diesels in their fleet today. So when you think about all the different applications that's going to be put in uh, across the U.S. and Canada, uh, I don't think it has to really apologize for, for anything. Any of those conditions, it performs very, very well. Uh, and like you said, 250,000 miles on some of these buses, I think, proves right there it can kind of go the distance and work well in the fleet, in the traditional school bus fleet. We know that uh, performance-wise, uh, certainly as you described, it can run in all these different applications. Uh, what about the actual noise level of the, the actual bus itself and propane and performance of the noise itself? Is it quieter is it you know it's definitely quieter yeah even today's traditional diesel buses um you know drivers will say you know kids still have to kind of scream over the the noise of the diesel engine and generally when that happens they get a little rowdier because they're talking loud and trying to talk over each other the nice thing about propane it's extremely quiet it's basically a gasoline engine like you have in your car yeah and the diesels have gotten to their credit more quiet as they well. They are definitely more quiet. Yeah, yeah but I, I think especially where we really notice it, uh, the loading zone at idle. Mm -hmm. That's really where that between it and the diesel has its biggest difference between the two. And that's critical, right? Because that's when you're instructing students, they're crossing, you want to hear oncoming traffic. And it gets so quiet, we've actually had people on demo rides go, 
oh, does this have stop-start technology? They thought the engine completely shut off because they're just used to the, the constant you know, noise and, mm. and rattle of a diesel. Right. So that's actually where it counts, too, being quiet, where you're actually doing the most important task is getting children loaded and unloaded off the bus. Yeah, yeah and in neighborhoods, too, where they operate, I don't think parents particularly like having the, the noise of the diesel engine coming through the neighborhood early in the morning or later in the afternoon. So that's a nice benefit we don't talk a lot about. Um, but it's definitely noticed by by parents and students just not having that constant noise, that constant racket of a diesel engine, especially some of the older ones yeah, uh, yeah. in the neighborhood. So another yeah. nice benefit. I guess, too, that's, a, that's an urban piece, too. <clears throat> As you get into urban areas and residential areas where school bus yards have to be right on top of, you know, where the residents live, right? Well, they're starting those buses early sometimes, right? 4.30 a.m., 5 a.m., and it, the more quiet you can be, the less probably neighbor complaints that you're going to have coming into the bus yard. Yep. Uh, performance of heating and cooling the actual passenger cabin of this vehicle with pro, pro, propane being the powertrain, uh, better than, worse than, uh, diesel? What, what, what are we looking at there? Drastically better than diesel. I mean, that is one of the attributes that we get time and time again, mm -hmm. <clears throat> which is diesel struggles so much to build heat. You know, and that that relates directly back to the cabin temperature, the comfort of the students. Um, you get into special needs applications where you have a wheelchair lift, you know, a board. Sure. Well, when that door opens, it's it's massive, right? The square inches of that door just allows all the heat to be sucked right out of the bus. And the quicker you can recover and maintain that heat, the better off you are. And it, it really is night and day. We've had some tests done. Uh, side by side with the two, and it, it truly, I couldn't say it more, night and day difference. One of the applications, we actually sent a diesel bus out that was in a heated garage, and that heated garage was somewhere around 50, 55 degrees Fahrenheit. When the bus came back from route, the diesel, the cabin temperature was colder than when it left, so it couldn't maintain its own heat on an extremely cold day, get granted, but still, on the propane, it got up to normal temperatures, kids were taking coats off, and they were comfortable inside. Sounds like a good fuel for keeping passengers as comfortable as they possibly can be. And keeping drivers happy. I'd say of all the benefits of propane, I probably, in cold weather climates at least, I hear that from drivers more than anything. I love my propane bus because it stays so warm. So it's really nice for, you know, driver retention, right? They really appreciate that aspect of propane buses. So they, they love driving the buses in their fleet. When you look at the whole system of a school district or a contractor where they're fueling, they're maintaining, they're running, the drivers are using the buses, the parents and the constituents around that have these buses running, performance overall uh, versus the other propulsion technologies? Uh, you guys drag raced, I think, a diesel line <laughs> of propane over there at Roush, didn't you? I think we might have done that's that. That's what y'all do at Roush is drag drag race stuff. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. So we, we've drag race propane drag cars, and then we also drag race propane school buses. And, um, you know, side by side, I think the expectations, like, like we talked about, people say, well, diesels have so much torque, right? They've got so much. It can't possibly be that this propane could outperform it. But time and time again, when you put them head to head, that the numbers just work on paper, but they don't when you hit the track. And you get performance and acceleration characteristics that are better out of the propane than you do out of the diesels with, you know, that have, at least on paper, 150, 200 more foot-pounds of torque, you know, coming out of that engine versus what, you know, the propane is. And then very similarly on that thread, I mentioned, you know, drag racing. So um, Susan Roush McClanahan, which is Jack's daughter, drag races a, a propane drag car. And you could just see from, you know, the power coming out of that, nearly a 1,000 horsepower out of a small V8 on propane only, the characteristics of performance that you get out of propane. If you want to make power, absolutely propane can do it. So you're actually using a race fuel in a school bus when you're using <laughs> propane is what you're telling me. You don't sell it that way, but... A very affordable power race power. fuel, yeah. yes. Yeah. And so, you don't want to drive it like that, but, you know, in rural districts when they have to get up in the highway which they do a lot and they want to get up in traffic quickly you can do it quicker in that product than anything so yeah. and you, you mentioned you know race fuel but if you look at the octane rating of the fuel kind of is right you, yep. you, you think about our pump gas 87 octane or if you have a high performance vehicle 93 well <clears throat> propane's around 108 a really high octane rating for the fuel so it is kind of like a race fuel looking at performance uh, as it relates to the financials, right? This is a totally 
propane performance segment we're doing here. Uh, how does it play out with those that have to make that financial decision in the districts of the contractors? How well does it perform financially? That's a great question. So we've followed this really closely. And, you know, early on we did a lot of projections, right, estimations. And we'd get the question, well, yeah, that's great. Propane's affordable today. But what about next year and the year after and the year after that? And once again, just like the durability of the engine, time has told that consistently there is a year after year savings to operate propane versus a gas or a diesel or whatever you want to compare it to. Um, some of the long range studies that we've looked at for a school district compared to a diesel have been 25 to 35 cents per mile. And that's pretty consistent whether you look at big fleets, small fleets, east coast, west coast, rural or urban, there seems to be a common thread in there where you're getting that saving. So thousands of dollars per bus per year back and over the lifetime of it, you know, nearly to the point of you know, every three buses, you get one free kind of a thing, maybe even less than that. So even economically and at the level of decision makers on those that have to put the dollars out, it sounds like propane performs really well. Yeah, it does. A lot of contractors run propane buses for that reason, it, because they are economical, right? Of course, they want to be um, very economical and um, they are, you know, safety minded and, and they're um, environmentally conscious as well. But it saves them money in their fleet when they run propane. Uh, so that is a huge benefit for contractors. And we talked about different um, size schools that run our fleets. If you look, I think it's the top 100 largest fleets. Over a third of them are running right. propane buses now, uh, Bluebird propane buses. So uh, they obviously are looking for savings as well because they have these large fleets that they have to maintain. So uh, performance in a mixed fleet, does this uh, have a, a sweet spot where these vehicles are used where it just makes more sense? Uh, I know you touched on special needs because you've got a much larger door and a lift, so loading and unloading takes longer in time, and that, that allows you to te keep the uh, passenger compartment uh, more comfortable because as soon as that door is closed, you can heat the, heat the bus back up, or if it's summertime, you can run the air conditioning. Yep. Um, is there... If somebody had a fleet of mixed uh, school buses, whether it's a contractor or a district, where does this perform its best? You know, we, we see mixed use out of them. Um, the product's only offered in a, uh, a conventional. So we have some that have mixed fleets that run, you know, larger rear engine applications for team buses, trip buses, and that type of thing, you know, for, for quite a while. And it's still the case today. There's a lot of districts that say, hey, for my you know, uh, bus that's going to go on the basketball trip and field trips, we're going to keep gasoline units for that, or we're going to keep diesel units for that, because we know where we can get fuel. And then you check in with those school districts a couple years later, and they're sending propane on it. They find that the fuel is more readily available, or maybe their fuel provider will stop in and fill the bus up at a football game or something that's really convenient. And, you know, now we've got them pushing the envelope where they're doing really, really long, like, annual field trips. We had one that did nearly 1,000 miles, you know, on a field trip in a propane bus. And that kind of goes back, to to, you know, just the plant that Bluebird builds them at and how they're delivered. But, you know, unless anything's changed recently, I think all of them are driven to delivery, aren't they, Albert? Yeah, regardless of where they're going, all the way into Canada, we're driven. We don't truck them anywhere. So you can get fuel everywhere now. It's a great thing. So it sounds like really good performance all around. And even in some of those applications like trip buses that require long distances uh, that can potentially fill the need. And if not, it could be part of your route bus fleet. And, and certainly Absolutely. you could have trip buses that are running on other sources. But uh, mixed fleet is not out of the question then oh, is what you're saying. I, and I think we've got, we're spoiled, right, on gas and diesel. Gas is on every corner. And propane is not on every corner. You know, you have to look for it a little bit more, but it's well within any range of any size tank that you might have. You're going to be able to find it. Looking at where we're at today with the emissions challenges and the, the pressure to keep costs contained uh, at the district level and the contractor level and uh, EVs pushing into the marketplace and having the conventional gas and diesel offerings, uh, what items stick out on your mind and just making the performance of propane uh, for this school bus application really become something that should be top of mind? Well, I, I think from my point of view, um, you know, performance ties back into, you know, how do we service the vehicle? Uptime is a big part of performance as well. 
And when we look out at those regulations down the road, like you mentioned, that are shaping everything and they're, they're impacting everything, <clears throat> we've got a pretty good line of sight that, you know, our emission system and our technology is going to look just like it does today, very similar from a serviceability standpoint as it will in 2027 and hopefully beyond. When you flip over and look at that compared to the traditional fuels for that fleet that is thinking about what to do, I'm in diesel today, where do I go? You know, if you stay in diesel, the technology is really going to change whether you're, you know, ready for it or not, right? The next version you buy might look very different and then certainly by 2027 different again. So um, if you want to get into kind of a, a stable base, uh, propane, I think, would offer the most stable base that you could go to today. Yep. Great point. Yeah. Who knows what diesel is going to be by 2027. And we all remember 2007 when some of the changes first happened. So I know that there's a lot of concerns with customers today about what would be a similar kind of big, massive step we're going to have to take uh, on how these buses get serviced and issues related to that. So, no, great point. So, so thank you for framing up uh, propane performance. Uh, it's, it really seems like for those that are out there, they need to at least, if they haven't looked at it, they need to look at it, right? They need to see if uh, this change in diesel or if they're considering other technologies, this may be their easiest transition uh, and also may be a benefit to them in the long haul. So uh, propane performance, uh, thank you for sharing all that you have with us. It sounds like for those that are uh, still in the diesel arena full force that this may be something they need to look at rather sooner rather than later to try to make that uh, decision. And the transition sounds like it may actually be somewhat of an easy one and, and in most cases will be a quick fit. Yep. Uh, so Ryan, thanks for that. Albert, thanks for being here. Thank you. And this has been a bird's eye view of propane performance.